Hey guys, Corey here. Today I'm going to show you how to use voxel tools in your own projects with a Godot game engine. Voxel tools was used in all of the projects you're watching on screen. It's a C++ module for Godot written by Xilin and it allows for real-time editable terrains made of either blocky or smooth voxels. In this video, we're going to look at three topics. One, how to get voxel tools in Godot, including where you can get binaries so you don't have to compile it yourself. Two, I'll show off some of the demos I've made so you can start playing with it right away. And three, I'll show you how to use it in your own projects. Let's get started. The primary way to get voxel tools for Godot is to come to Xilin's code repository on GitHub. You can download all of the source code and go to this guide here, which is a fairly thorough instruction guide that will teach you how to build voxel tools with Godot, which is basically you download the source code, add it into the Godot source code, and then recompile. There's a lot of information in these pages that I'm not going to cover here, so make sure that regardless of how you get voxel tools that you go through these pages. If for some reason you don't want to or are not able to compile Godot, you can download my pre-built binaries on my website. The link for this is in the description below. And then regardless of whether you compile Godot and Voxel tools yourself or use my pre-built binaries, you probably want to grab my demo project. And this demo includes all of Xilin's demos, but it also includes a first person and third person demo with this little playable character. It's the most game like demo that we have available and um, it's a good way to get started and hit the ground running. So grab the demo, grab either a binary or compile the source code yourself and then you will be ready to move on to the next section. Okay, moving on to how to actually use Voxel tools. Import the project. Go find the directory where you copied my demo. It would be right here for me. Load up the project file. Open that and it will add it into this list. I've already done that. Here we go. Most of these folders are demos, independent demos. At, the, at this moment, transvoxel test is not working. Um, these demos are Xilin's demos, so if you run main, the main scene here or there, you'll be able to see his demos. All of my demos live under FPS demo. All right, let's look through my demos here with height map smooth. That's already open. Controls, I have W, A, S, and D to move the character around. I can change the angle of the gun. I can shoot with the left mouse button and that will add terrain. I can remove terrain with the right mouse button. If I hold down control and then click, I get these bouncy balls that grow over time. If I press F, I'll get a full screen. I can use tab to turn on and off my display. Spacebar will jump. I can press P to rotate between no shading, overdraw, and wireframe. Escape will give me my mouse cursor or capture it again if I, I can toggle back and forth. And I think that's all for the controls. If I hit F8 to stop it, I can go back to my demo list and height map blocky F6 to start this scene. F for full screen, tab to remove the, well, I'll leave it there so you can see the FPS. And it's a little, a little slower than normal because I have the screen recording software. But you can see all the same controls will work.
There's some artifacts there on the lower levels of detail that haven't been ironed out. But once things are drawn on the highest level of detail, the level zero, things get smoothed out. And here is the noise world. Up in the top left, you can see the parameters for the noise algorithm. If I press N, it will randomize those and we'll get a whole new terrain. And custom stream here shows two features. One is it'll show a data source that was written in code, actually written in GDScript. Using a data source written in GDScript is rather slow, which in this case, the data source is just a sine wave. So if your data source was written in C++, this would have been built out a lot faster. So we open up our custom stream here. You can see under world that what's being loaded here is a, the stream is from my stream and my stream is basically an algorithm that draws sine waves. The other thing that this scene does is it generates a terrain from code. You can see here in my scene tree that there is no voxel log terrain node, nor a voxel terrain node. And that's because in this script, I am loading the terrain from code. And you can see if you just read through all of these comments, you can see how I've done it. And I, I provide options for an image-based stream, a 3D noise stream, you can use voxel terrain, you can use voxel log terrain. You can use your own custom data stream. So by default, this is set up to load a custom code terrain and to load everything from code. Let's create a new scene from scratch. Let's create a 3D scene. And spatial, I'm going to rename to world. I'm going to add a voxel terrain. So you notice we have two nodes here. If you want blocky voxels, you want to go with voxel terrain. And you can do smooth voxels with voxel terrain. However, you're pretty much going to want to use voxel lod terrain most of the time. Once I have a voxel terrain in here, I can insert a stream. If I wanted to do a height map, I could do a voxel stream image. And clicking on this again will give me the option to insert a new image. So if I go load one, I know that under blocky terrain, noise distorted is a height map. Now this image has got to be imported properly. So it already has been. Let's go find this picture. If I look here, notice it has been imported as an image. By default, when you add an image, let's look at these textures. So this picture has been imported as a texture. So anytime you add in an image, whether it's JPEG or PNG or anything like that, it's going to automatically be inserted as a texture but for a height map, we need it imported as an image. So you'll have to come in here, select image, and then re-import, and it's going to want to save and quit and restart the editor. So I'm not gonna do that for this because it's actually a texture. And this image has already been re-imported as an image. So that's an important point. If you wanna bring in your own height maps, that you need to be able to do this. Okay, so the voxel terrain, the image is set to the height map there. 
channel. If I select type, it's going to be blocky. If I want it to be smooth voxels, then I need to set this as STF and turn on smooth meshing. Both are necessary. So right now I'm going to leave it as blocky. Voxel library is going to be a new voxel library, and then I'll leave the defaults. View distance 128, this could be expanded. And then I need to assign the viewer path. So this is basically wanting a camera or a player. So let me add in a camera. And then let's change the viewer path to camera. Generate collisions is fine to leave on as the default. And that is all we need. So let's play the scene. And let's go ahead and save it. I'll save it as test. And there we go. We have our train, except the camera is below the train. And we're going to select the camera, go down to transform, and then increase the Y value to a little bit over 50. And there we go. We, we have our blocky terrain. If we want to get this into a smooth terrain, I'll come back here, change this to SDF, enable smooth meshing, and then restart the scene. And there we go. We have our smooth terrain. Let me rotate the camera around so we can see this a little bit. Okay, so you see what's going on with that hill there? It's clipping. So let's go back to the camera. Oh, we're still on the camera, and we're going to adjust this far clip here, which is only set to 100. I would set it to at least 1,000 for on my computer. Setting it to 8K is just fine. Now we're limited by the view distance. It's only set to 128 on voxel terrain. So if we bring this out to 256, you can see that it's building out a little bit further. I have a pretty fast system, but I wouldn't run this much more than about 384. I've tried running it at 512, and it's just rather slow, at least on the smooth type of voxels. It may be more efficient on blocky voxels. Okay, so that's about it for voxel terrain. So let's get rid of this. And now we'll add in a voxel LOD terrain. LOD stands for Levels of Detail. For a stream, again, I'm going to choose image. I'll click on this again. Then I can go load the image, which is under blocky terrain, noise distorted, channel. Uh, I don't think this works on type, which is blocky. Yeah, I didn't think so. So channel needs to be set to STF. So we get smooth. Let's see, view distance, levels of detail, count, and split scale. Those are fine for now. Let's assign the camera. And the rest is fine for those defaults. There we go. Our height map has been created. And we're still using the these default settings for the camera that or the, the settings for the camera that I had put in before. But let's extend. Let's raise the camera up higher and then rotate the X in the X direction. Now, one of the reasons why we want to use the voxel LOD terrain is because it allows for a far greater view distance and much higher performance. So if I increase this to, let's say, 1024, and bump this up 
let's say to six, you can see already we've tremendously increased our view distance. So I'll leave it to you to continue to play with those numbers and see what kind of settings give you the best results for the amount of distance and the performance that you're looking for. The next thing I want to look at is changing the stream. Let's get rid of the height map and instead choose voxel stream noise. Under Noise, I'm going to click on New Open Simplex Noise. I'll click on this again. So here's where I can set all of the settings for the noise algorithm. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. Okay, the default settings for the noise leave us at a much higher plane, about 200. So let's move this up. Now, you may be wondering why my window keeps popping up here on the left and the top, and your window probably keeps coming up in the middle. Let me show you how to change that real quick. If you go under Edit, Editor set Settings, and then Window Placement, I've got it set to my top left. That way I can keep this window open. The other thing I can do is under Editor and Editor Layout, I've saved an editor layout where all of my windows, the file system, the inspector, node, scene, import, are all on the right side. That allows me to take full advantage of a larger viewport when I'm using this dual window interface. Okay, let's go back to Voxel Train and adjust some of these settings. So if I increase the period, you can see that gives me a different type of noise. And then I can also increase the height range. And this will give me much deeper noise differences between the top edge of the noise and the bottom edge. You probably noticed that the default lighting environment in Godot is not very attractive. So in my next video, I'll show you how to set up a nice outdoor environment so you can turn drab into fab and get some reasonable looking terrains. Okay, so I've shown you guys how to get Godot either from the source code or my pre-built binaries. I've shown you the documentation that I highly encourage you go through all of it and read through it so you can learn the tips and tricks, including performance tips, and other factors that I did not include. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and follow me on all of my social media channels, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you want to join my email newsletter on my website, there's a section right over here, so that's available to you as well. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.